hello everyone in this video we will learn about pcb that is process control block first of all why it is known as process control block so first of all it is block means it contains some information or it stores some information that is used to control the process that's why it is known as process control block a block to control any process so if you wants to give the definition of pcb or process control block then it is a data structure that is maintained by our operating system for each and every process means each and every process has its own pcb pcb is used for storing the collection of information about the process and the pcb is identify an integer process id that is known as pid or a process id a pcb keeps all the information that is required or we can say is needed to keep the track of process means once the process is created from the creation to the termination of process each and every information is to be stored into a pcb and that information is required or needed to keep the track of that process the pcb is maintained for a process throughout its lifetime is once process created its pcb is created and once the process is terminated or exited its pcb is removed so the pcb of any process is maintained throughout its lifetime and is deleted once the process is terminated or exited the architecture of pcb is completely dependent on operating system and it make a process may contain different information in different operating system means it's a os dependent it may be possible that in windows operating system the structure of pcb is different than unix and pcb is lies in kernel memory space pcb is always there in kernel memory space now let us move further to pcb contains means what actually process control block contains which are the different fields of pcb or process control block so first one is process id first is process id that is the unique identification for each of the process in the operating system this process id is used to uniquely identify each and every process within our system second one is process state that is the current state of process right now process is in which state either in running state or ready state or waiting state or block state third one is pointer that is a pointer to a parent process means if a process is created by some other process then this process means the pointer of this process is point to the its parent process then after priority it contains the priority of process what is the priority of the current process then after program counter it's nothing but a pointer means this field will contain the pointer to the address of the next instruction to be executed for this process means which is the next instruction to be executed for this process that is the pointer to that address is in this program counter the next one is cpu register various cpu registers where the process need to be stored for execution for a running state then after io status information this field contains the list of io devices that are allocated to a current running process suppose current running process is, a, is using printer and memory and processor then it contains the list of these three devices printer memory and processor then after accounting information this field includes the amount of cpu used for a process execution and time limit so these are the different fields of process control block now next move further to context switching so first of all what actually context switching is here this concept is mainly used in multi programming multi programming means it's a ability of cpu or processor to execute more than one process at a same time so whenever your pro cpu 
supports multi programming at that time context switching will occur between two or more process so if he wants to define or if he wants to give the definition of context switching then we can say is the context switching is the stopping of one process and restarting another process or we can say is stopping current running process and restarting a new process that is known as context switching now when an event occur the operating system saves the state of current running or we can say active process and restore the state of new process into it the context switching is purely overhead why because whenever the context switching will occur into the system at that time the system does not perform any useful work at that time that's why context switching is known as or is said to be a purely overhead cpu does not perform any type of computing during context switching now let us move further steps performed by operating system during context switching so first of all first step is operating system takes control by interrupt means whenever the context switch is going to be happen during that time first of all operating system takes control means there isn't any process means if cpu is allocated to any other process to execute it then the cpu will be forcefully taken from that process so right now no any process is in running mode so initially operating system will tax control by using interrupt so here for example process p0 is running here cpu is allocated to process p0 now context switching is to be done over here so what happen this operating system will take control or take up cpu from this process so here this process is stop here so this process will become in idle means not running or in ready queue second step it will save the context of running process in the pcbs so what's happen here it takes control now it stops process p0 so whatever the context of process p0 is saved and after saving the context it will reload the content of process p1 into process p1 pcb so next is reload the context of new process from the new process pcb so it just load process p1 pcb into os once it is loaded then after process p1 starts its execution so from here process p1 start execution up to here process 1 is executing so if we consider this portion here from here to here your processor is not executing anything means it's completely overhead now again process p1 stops here so the pcb of process p1 is saved into its own pcb and the context of process p0 is again reload into os and again now next turn for process p0 so return control to a no new process means here new process is p1 again at here process p0 is a new process so in this way your context switching is performed step by step so if you consider here this portion is completely ideal again here this portion is completely ideal means in these two portion processor is completely ideal mode means processor is not using by any your process so in this way your context switching is performed thank you very much